they could even be a money maker for me yeah. eventually. But the thing is, we. Oh, if you're looking the other way, well, there's no sound on that thing. Um, Seems like a well-designed gate to me. There's more of the stuff still in it trying to get cut on. Well, those vandals sure did a good job this time. Hey. in the cave too. Can you pass it back? And the padlock was open. Thank you. Cigarette butts. Paper. They broke our sign. The, the plastic plexiglass is all broken. Here's a piece of plastic here. Uh, pull these rocks out on our way out, huh? Yeah, I don't know. For some reason, they throw rocks in here. I, I don't understand why. Why they knock rocks down or throw them into the house? Here's a cigarette butt you missed. More paper. Oh my gosh. More paper. Plastic bags. There's. Battery wrappers, uh, broken formations. Another cigarette oh, butt. Geez. Come on in. Well, I'll pick this up, I suppose. Let's go up and see what we got. Does he want to get a picture of the debris way up here? Look at this. Made for beard cameras. Oh no! Look at this. This is a freshly broken formation. Look at the size of that thing's thousands of years old. That'll never be back in anybody's lifetime. And even the broken part, one inch is a hundred years. That's and oh, that's assuming no. the water patterns John are the same. If the water look patterns at, but change. Look at the flowstone. Oh, oh it makes me sick. When you get up here, I'm gonna just pick up this bottle and pass it back. There's no water in here, that's something. Beautiful cave otherwise. Oh, it is. A big cave too, like you said. And this cave is 15 times, John, as long as any other known cave in the park. We got 450 feet, and it'd still be more if we could dig it out. Can you see in the back there with the camera, Tim? No. Okay. That, that room right here, John, would be 75 feet long and at least uh, 12 to 15 feet wide if it was yeah. completely dug out. And this would be walking passage. Oh, yeah, absolutely right here. walking. You could have a whole group stand in here and, and lecture to them. I pray there's no formations broken. 
Oh, I, that makes me sick. I sure hope one person goes in there, and every single formation will be snapped off unless it's dug down. And here's a prime example. Caves are non-renewable natural underground resource. And this is a layer of calcite where a stalagmite has started to build up from the floor up. And it's been completely removed. It found it laying here on the side. And uh, if you could imagine the geologic rarity of something in northeast Wisconsin where the glaciers destroyed right. the caves, very few caves exist. And, and this is an outstanding cave. And it's already in a county park system. Mm -hmm. Once you start with this, you know, they'll just keep, everyone gets the idea that it's okay to do this. And we're going to have so many. Boy, I don't know. I thought this was... We're lighting up pretty good, though, Jay. We're going to have to try to spear some ground over or something. Hope it blends in. You're getting them pretty good. Not in here, though. Here's where the uh, stalactite was removed from the ceiling. Judging by the size of that, it's probably several inches long. Tim, John. Just a minute, Gary. Over here we've got some examples of flowstone. Several in this room. There's more up ahead, right here stuff. This is still very, very nice. Here we have some very small the leg tights, these are probably in the age of a hundred years old or, or so. 
shovel here. There's another busted one. There's actually water dripping on some of these so they're actively growing. Yeah, I'm going to go here. Hang on, John. I'm coming. There's just... People can dig. We could bring a dozen people in here. They'd all be digging in a different place. This keeps going, but... I don't know what's up ahead. They're turning around for me, so... Also goes up to my right. Just incredible cave. Okay, so. Now this will be about it, Tim. I'm sorry. I just can't. One of the comments I guess we need to make is that there are very few really significant caves in northeast Wisconsin, and this is definitely one of them. The potential is way in excess of 500 feet. We're already at 450 feet. It's a 60,000-year-old Niagara Dolomite uh, cave. It's a type of rock, and it survived the last glacier of 10 to 12,000 years ago. And uh, it's just an absolute jewel in the park system. I have no doubt this could be obviously the biggest single attraction, even moneymaker in the park at some point, if it were properly showcased, uh, similar to Ledgeview Nature Centers, 
where they have 12,000 school children a year going I, through. I think of their uh, Maritime Museum, what they've got downtown in Manitowoc. Uh, this could draw the same kind of numbers very easily. With the location right yeah, here, right a, next a to major the, super next highway. 43, yep. Yeah. And you got a wonderful opportunity for other interpretive trails to tie in, I think this and this cave a, could be one part of a larger nature tour. I think it's a good point to point out. This cave was originally discovered in the early 80s by Norb Cox, a member of the Wisconsin Speleological Society. And all the work done up to this point of excavating and all these tunnels, everything was excavated. They got into this room, dug this down, and they dug all the different panel, the channels out. You can see by the size and the shape, they're all dug by hand. They're all dragged out by hand. The amount of work into this is just hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours. And uh, we, we would like to preserve the cave because there's a lot more to discover in here and a lot more to take out and we'd like to be involved in doing it. At one time we even had a, a track system set up between this room that we're in called the Halloween room that was broken into on Halloween. I think Keith Brown was part of the group that was here at that time from Chelton. And they even had a little string of lights in here so that we were able to uh, see like Christmas tree lights and uh, they'd have the buckets on a little overhead trolley that would run out to the entrance. And there's uh, no telling well, how long this cave could be. You've got the copy of the map to take along with them so the videos in the map can absolutely can show where we are on the map when you absolutely. take the show the video. This room right here, right now, that John is sitting in, uh, I estimate if it were dug down, it would probably be at least eight feet high, if not higher. I think higher. And uh, like I say, it's a fabulous room. You. Even on a rainy day, you could have a whole group of people stay in here and talk to them as an introductory part of the cave tour or whatever. This is John Kellner. Uh, he's one of our longtime WSS members, a past chairman of our group. He actually owns a cave himself, so he can appreciate the rarity and significance of protecting them. This is Tim Geyer, the video photographer here in our group. He's a past vice chairman of the Wisconsin Speleological Society. John Kellner, who you just saw, is from Sturgeon Bay. Tim Geyer is from Green Bay, Wisconsin, and the person talking is Gary Soule from Sturgeon Bay, also a past chairman of the Wisconsin Speleological Society. Are you ready, by the way? Yeah.
is to cut all this off again. And then we get our we get we get the, the side that would normally go to the inside of a door that's bolted on. We will can I cut my light out, Tim? Yeah, go ahead. We would weld that to this angle iron here. Position that thing so when you close it, it's got to line up. It'll be a little trouble to close it, but then it would open. Shit, you can even open it with a key on the outside. Jim? Jim? Yeah, I'm coming. That couple gave, that couple gave us a world of information. They don't even know it. You want to know something remarkable? I'll wait till you get here because you're not going to believe what I'm going to tell you. Hang on. I'm filming right now. Hey, guys. Oh. I got my night shot on. Did you hear it too? It sounded like no. you were coming back. Well, I, I thought I could hear it coming through here. Oh, well, maybe a point worth mentioning. While we were in the cave, a group from uh, Shawano and Green Bay area came and uh, came to see the cave because the last time they were here, the gate was busted off, and they came in then, and they thought they'd do the same today. And of course, we had it open, but that thing is so accessible, we have to, we have to protect this cave. And it's not only the vandals, but those that come after the vandals that that don't realize. And uh, once you get names on a wall, they're broken formations, they all think it's fine to do it. Now this is, this is bolted to the rock, but there's also concrete poured in here. This is a real good job. Sure, there's concrete in here. 19, this was put in. I didn't know that. The cover is extremely heavy. Has to be. cave gate is only as strong as its weakest point. And trust me, if there's a weak point anywhere, they'll find it. Especially if you're in an area that's not supervised or you don't have regular people checking a gate, like in wild, undeveloped caves. That's all we don't need to mention with these. That's quite good. But I'm just saying if they had...